I was given a whole box of free Apple stuff from someone I knew back in high school. They're moving house and didn't want to take it with them. Not one to turn down free tech, I happily took it. Apparently most of it is broken, but let's see what we got and the condition it's in. Maybe some of it could be repaired. This same girl gave me a destroyed iPhone 8 Plus several years ago that I was able to fix up. Inside this box was an iPhone 4, a few iPad cases, along with an Apple Watch Series 3, two iPads, as well as a set of AirPods, and a whole MacBook Air. That's quite a substantial amount of devices. She mentioned they'd been sitting around for some time, and the boxes show that. I'm kind of surprised everything except the iPhone came all packed up in their original boxes. The first out of the pile is this iPad mini, a 16 gigabyte first generation. The box is filthy, but nothing that can't be cleaned up. Inside the box is the tablet with the cracked screen. Not much else is left other than the instruction booklet with no stickers. Next up is another iPad. This one being a 2012 model of the iPad 2, meaning it's a 16 gigabyte version. These were widely used in schools and is exactly where this one has come from. They were great until Apple pushed the iOS 8 software update that made these so slow they were basically unusable. I know because I was one of those kids in school with one, and we're stuck with it because Apple doesn't let you install the older, faster software. This one is uncracked, but it's had its screen replaced at some point with a white version. They haven't changed the bezel, so it's black and mismatches the display, which has been poorly installed and is lifting in several places. As for the rest of the device, it's alright considering this was a student's iPad. Not too many noticeable scratches, other than the ones left behind from a case. Also in the lot was this Apple Watch Series 3. Apple just stopped selling these. This is one of the later produced units as the box is smaller than the original one. This happens to be a 38mm black aluminium version. Inside is all the documentation, the watch, and matching bands. Its screen is smashed. Kid you not, I had a spare 38mm Series 3 display that I pulled from an Apple Watch that stopped turning on, but I sold it a few weeks ago. What we have hiding inside this plain white box is a set of Apple's AirPods. These seem to be dead. We'll have to try charging them later. Looking for other goodies inside the box, I find that the tray is glued in because this isn't a real Apple box. I guess these used AirPods weren't coming with a charger. The one thing to come without a box was this iPhone 4, smashed badly on both sides and missing its camera lens. The last item in this slot is a MacBook Air, with a 2.2GHz Intel Core i7, 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. Inside the box is the laptop itself, along with its power cable and documentation. Looking up the serial number, this is a 2015 model that looks to have been purchased in either late 2016 or early 2017, as of the macOS Sierra references. I've been told it's water damaged. But hey, it comes with stickers. Before taking a closer look at the MacBook Air, I'll try powering on the other devices first. Immediately, the iPad 2, iPad mini, and Apple Watch show signs of life, but that iPad 2 keeps rebooting. After leaving them to charge for some time, we can see the iPad 2 is still boot looping, likely due to a bad battery. The iPhone 4 looks just as dead as the AirPods. However, the Apple Watch has powered on, but lacks a functional touchscreen. As for the iPad mini, it works, but is locked with a passcode. After power cycling the charger on the iPhone, it was indeed powered on. It vibrates, so something is just wrong with its screen. So can we fix any of it? Well, as many know, broken AirPods is basically a lost cause. Being one of, if not the hardest tech device to repair, it's really nothing more than e-waste at this point. The case draws no current when plugged in, and replacing the battery would be a waste of time and would likely just damage the plastic case. Maybe you could just replace the case itself, but the condition of the buds are unknown. 
The iPhone 4 is quite old and not sought after as a working mobile, but possibly to a collector. It however needs some serious work. What I can do quickly is test whether the screen is faulty by attaching a test one in its place. With the case removed, you can see it's missing the bottom screws. But even without opening it, I can tell it's been poorly repaired and has even more missing screws as the display's frame is loose. With hardly any screws, it basically falls apart. I'll get access to the display's connectors, being sure to first unplug the battery before any other cables. Going to unplug the display, I noticed the cable was loose. I detached the adjacent cable to inspect the socket and everything looks in order. I think the lack of screws meant the LCD cable wasn't properly secured, so when the phone was dropped, it simply became unplugged. I'll connect everything back and test the phone. And that's all it was. The phone now powers up just fine. Granted, it still needs a lot of new parts, but I'm not going to spend the time fixing it any further. Just like the iPad 2, its last software update made the phone laggy and unstable. I'll get the brackets reattached and install a spare, uncracked back panel I had laying around with its accompanying pentalobe screws. As it's locked with a passcode and still retains the previous owner's information, I need to reset the phone using iTunes. iCloud has already been switched off, so I can reset it without Apple locking me out of the device. For the Apple Watch, it just needs a screen. Unfortunately, I sold the spare one I had, but I'll have to find one to put on it in the near future. Overall, this might be the best item in the lot as it's fairly new and even with repair costs, it should still work out quite cheap. The second last device, the iPad mini, needs a new digitizer. Thankfully, this is only about $10 as the LCD isn't glued to the glass. However, with the glass being glued to the housing, it's still a time-consuming process, especially since I need to repair the dented corners in order to be able to get the new glass to sit flush with the housing of the tablet. What I'll do for the moment is wipe the passcode from the device like I did with the iPhone. This device like the iPhone 4 might be something I don't fix, but rather give or sell to somebody else who might want to do it up. Our last device is this 2015 MacBook Air. I know for a fact it's water damaged, so I won't be plugging it in without opening it up and assessing the damage first. By looking at the screws, I can tell someone has been inside the device, likely to assess the extent of the damage. If my memory serves me correctly, I remember her telling me back in high school that a milk drink spilt in her bag, saturating this MacBook. That would have been only a few months old at the time. As for that reason, this MacBook is in fantastic cosmetic condition and has been sitting unused for most of its life. But it's not hard to see why. There's corrosion all over the logic board. This wouldn't be an easy fix. I have a few water damaged MacBook Airs and they all have one common issue, no backlight. And I can tell just by looking at the LCD connector on this MacBook Air, it's exactly the same. If I learn how to fix this issue, I can fix about four laptops. The moral of the story here is to never get your laptop wet, but by having a battery that's secured inside the laptop and inaccessible by the average user, thanks to Apple's security screws, if you do get your laptop wet, you can't even disconnect power from it to try and save it. Instead, it's probably just going to fry itself. However, the SSD has been removed from this laptop, so the owner probably got their data without too much issue. This will definitely be a device that I'll keep around and hopefully one day we'll fix it up. So this is it, a small but eventful tech lot of free Apple goods. I'll definitely be holding onto the MacBook and Apple Watch to fix, but will likely spare the iPads and iPhone for someone else. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the tech lot playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.